Hello everyone and welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Renz and before I get started I want to thank everybody who supports the channel, everybody who is a subscriber. This video will be more geared towards black Americans but it is still for all people and because it will take all people in order for this to happen and when it does happen and as it's happening then other people who are not black Americans who are not uh, people of color who don't understand it who won't understand it without realizing that everything that's not about you is not against you so we are in this time frame of voting it's a presidential election there are many other elections within there are propositions that are going on and those things are important and I am not by any means telling people that they should not vote go out and vote many people risk their lives in order for you to be able to vote many people have fought injustices in order for you to be able to vote but I say over the last 60 years the meaning behind what people went out and sacrificed has been lost on black Americans and it is something that we need to regain or we will continue to see the same thing happening to us over and over and over again and that is the regression of the black community the regression of black power the regression of the black family will continue unless we regain what it actually was that our forefathers fought for. You see, when I watch on things like Facebook and Instagram, when I watch people fighting over Republican or Democrat and they are white, what I'm watching are people who are fighting over which direction, which leadership, a system that was built for them should go. Because if you look at the history of it, the and I did a video about the Constitution, the Constitution is an amazing document, but that document was placed in an environment that was not befitting of it. It was placed in an environment where the words on paper didn't match the mentality, the morality of the people. The words that said that all men are created equal, that meant only land-owning white Anglo-Saxon Christian men were created equal. It didn't mean the slaves were equal. It didn't mean women were equal. It didn't mean the Chinese were equal. It didn't mean the Irish were equal. It didn't mean the unchurched were equal. It only meant land-owning white Anglo-Saxon males were created equal and that everyone else is unequal. And although those words reverberate into the future to mean that everyone was created equal, and we have certainly made strides in the morality of eliminating slavery, chattel slavery in America, the morality of women's rights, the morality of all the human rights that has occurred over these 270 plus years, although we have, it has lived and moved in that, we are losing the intentions behind it for what people did 60 years ago. For when people marched on Washington, when people uh, came together in unity and had the bus, bus boycotts, and boycotts and other economic boycotts. Black America has lost what it was that our ancestors were actually fighting for. Our communities are going down the tubes. Our children have been going down the tubes. Our money, our financial power has been going down the tube. What we have focused on is the two and few billionaires or multi-millionaires of black Americans who have a stri who strived out to do more. But we forget about the masses who live in communities where they don't own the homes that they live in. They don't participate in the schools that teach their children. They're not living in a world where they recognize that this is not a system that was built for you. And we are steadily 
angry and fighting over black people who vote Republican and black people who vote Democrat. When the fact of the matter is neither party was designed nor built for the black American. But yet we fight about it and we will say that, well, what else can we do? What else should we do? Sure, vote for whoever you want to vote for. 60 years ago, the majority of black people were Republicans. Then if you go by the history of the Democratic Party, then the Dixiecrats came over, took over the Republican Party, and now the majority of black people are Democrat. But what does it matter if after you vote, after this election, your communities stay the same? We fight and say, well, what did Obama do for the black community? But what has Trump done for the black community? What has Biden done for the black community? What is, Kam is Kamala Harris really black? What are, we fight over all these things, but yet we don't recognize that we can go and vote today, but it is your after action that actually matters. What you do next actually matters. Are you building in your community? Are you taking the time to say, okay, I am going to establish a budget so that we can save in maybe in a year, two years, five years, 10 years, depending upon where you are in your finances. We're going to get our credit right. We're going to buy our home that we live in and we're going to participate in the PTA. We're going to participate in the local government. We're going to play this game that is fitting for us because this system is not built for us right now. So let me come. Let me convert it to a system that does fit for me. Let me utilize what's already in place to make it fit for me so that I can grow and find, have a foundation of power to be able to make changes. You see, you think your vote is going to make a moral change in people. You can vote for Biden. Biden can be become president. There will still be Jonathan Price's who will be murdered because a white police officer in Texas said he feared for his life while the man's hands were up in the air. Breonna Taylor's will still happen. These things will still happen. Gardner's will still happen. Biden becoming president doesn't change the morality of America. What will change the morality of America is fighting things at the ground level. Changing our economic standing in this country will begin to make that change because when you change the economic standing of a people in a country, then those people, and let's bring it down to the neighborhood, those people in that neighborhood then begin to dictate what the police will be able to do and not do in that neighborhood. They begin to dictate what the teachers will teach and not teach in that neighborhood. They begin to dictate the zoning of what businesses will come in that neighborhood and what won't. There won't be another liquor store on every corner. There won't be another pawn shop on every corner. There won't be another vape shop, smoke shop on every corner, a club on every corner. You begin to dictate what your neighborhood environment looks like. And the more you dictate that, your power rolls upward. But until we realize that Dr. King and Stokely Carmichael and Malcolm X was fighting for the morality of black people, for the morality of the community around them to force others who do not respect you in a system that wasn't made for you to respect you. Their morality won't come unless they have respect for you. Without that respect, then they will not have a moral inclination to say that you are a man divinely created with the certain unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the, and the uh, pursuit of happiness. They won't say to you that all men are created equal under God. As far as a hundred years ago, eugenics were being taught by those with degrees to say that black people were genetically inferior to white people. That these, that, that black people and some, and Asian people, that all these non Anglo Saxon, more pure, Aryan race people were not equal. They were substandard. And this wasn't just taught in places like Germany, Nazi Germany. This was taught in America. This was taught, this was taught at leading universities in America in the 1920s, 1900s and 1920s and 30s. This was taught by those who were learned. But yet we follow them. In how we conduct ourselves in our relationship. I'm sorry, but we are not on the same system as someone who was born white in America. 
We cannot have relationships and follow our pathway of relationship in the same manner that they do. They were not born knowing that this world is already against them simply because of the color of their skin. A white person doesn't go out and have to deal with police brutality the same way as a black person. A white person doesn't have to, a black person doesn't have to make sure that their name on their resume is either initialed or it is uh, of a name that is more appropriate for Anglo-Saxon white people. We don't have to, uh, white couples don't have to deal with how their children are treated more inferior in school simply because they are of the color of their skin. We don't have to deal with these things. We don't have to deal with the fact that it is expected that if a black person speaks correct English that they're considered talking white. This is not something that a white couple has to deal with. So all the books and all the literature and all the stories and all the television shows and movies that shows white people in this sunshine and rainbows does not actually work for black people. It is a different scenario for black people. So we can't follow that path because it's not, it's not a system that was made for you. It's not a process that's made. Hollywood wasn't made for you. The stories that are told are not made for you. There's the, the stories of Shakespeare were not made for you. You cannot follow those ideas. The, the writings of Dr. Spock, the writings of Sigmund Freud in how to raise your children or raise a community was not built for you. It was built with white people in mind who were in a white system that is already engineered for them. So black people come to realize that you have to live in a system, work a system that is built for you. They've made you fear Africa. They've made you think that everything in Africa is war-torn. Everything in Africa is diseased. Everything in Africa is famined. Everything in Africa is drought. Whereas they tell you this and you live in fear of it and won't go there while Africa is growing. Akon City is being built. The East African Federation is being formed. Rwanda, who went through genocide in 94, is now one of the most pristine countries in Africa. They're one of the most growing economies. Botswana has had 50 years of great government and, and has been growing, has one of the fastest growing economies. Uh, black people are doing great in South Africa. Nigeria is changing its format. They're building one of the first they're building the first oil refinery in Africa, which is going to bring in billions of dollars, but yet the, uh, the African diaspora is not a part of it. We're not moving in droves to either do business with, invest in, or physically pick up and move. We're not thinking that way because we've been told by this system that is not for you that it's filled with disease, it's filled with war, it's filled with drought, it's filled with famine, that everything negative is third world. Which go and look up what third world actually means because in many countries like Dubai is considered a third world country when you actually look up what third world means. And by no means economically would Dubai fit that category. But look up the definition before you use the term. Matter of fact, somebody put it in the comments because I'm not going to tell you. But we have to recognize that we have to fight in a way. Go vote. But then build your, build your economy, build your community. Get involved in your schools. Change the teachings in your school. Your school doesn't teach much about black history. Your schools don't teach much about economics. Your schools don't teach about long-term investments. Your schools don't teach about world economics. Your school doesn't teach the history of Africa. It doesn't teach the history of the Caribbean. It doesn't teach the, uh, the, 18, the 1804 revolt in Haiti. It doesn't teach these things. But our children are missing out on these educational points. We're missing out on seeing business leaders in their community. We're missing out on seeing us travel. We want to travel to Europe all the time and Australia all the time and Hawaii all the time. We, it's, it's, we're missing traveling to Ghana, to Senegal, to these places. We're missing our kids growing up seeing that happen in our lives so they, they don't grow up with that mindset. So we have to do more than just vote. Go vote. But voting is the minimum, the base minimum. If you expect more, if you expect a moral change, then you first have to gain the respect of those who disrespect you. And if they choose not to disrespect you, not to respect you, but continue to disrespect you, 
then you have to stand on your power and force your issue. And if they won't take your force by your words, then take it in the economy. You take money out of a person's pocket and all of a sudden their respect changes. You show them that they don't, you don't need them. You're not dependent upon them. That you can do better without them. And all of a sudden their moral standards towards you begin to change. You take down their statues. You take down their symbols of hate. And the moral stature of the next generation begins to change. You start showing that you can build me mega companies in other countries. Their moral idea of you begin to change. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't change, then to hell with them anyway. And you go do you, build Wakanda forever somewhere else. Because at the end of the day, you got to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.